حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم كل الطعام كان حلا لبني إسرائيل إلا ما حرم إسرائيل على نفسه من قبل أن تنزل التوراة قل فأتوا بالتوراة فاتلوها إن كنتم صادقين فمن افترى على الله الكريم أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستعيه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يعده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإنسان لا يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam The title of my khutbah today is Importance of Zikr in Ramadan Importance of Zikr in Ramadan Last week in my khutbah I reminded, I reminded us about the true essence of Ramadan and the need to purify our hearts and fast with every part of our limbs in order to, to gain both the inner and the outer benefits of Ramadan. One important way of achieving that is through constant zikr in Ramadan. Through zikr, we strengthen our connection with Allah, we become closer to Allah, and we purify our hearts, especially in Ramadan. The importance of zikr is reflected in many ayat of the Quran and the ahadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad The Prophet has also provided us with many examples of the type of zikr that we can do during the day and night and the benefit that we can derive from them. You know, Allah says to us in Surah Al-Hazab, Quran chapter 33, ayah 41. Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu, uzkuru Allah zikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. Allah says, O you who believe, remember Allah, that is, do, uh, do a lot of zikr, remember Allah a lot. And celebrate his praises both in the morning and in the night. And to press this home, the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in one hadith narrated by Abi Musa al Ash'ari, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, Mathalu al-Ladhi yazkur rabbahu wa al-Ladhi la yazkur rabbahu mathal al-Hayy wa al-Majid. Mutafakun alayhi. This hadith is narrated by both Muslim, Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that. The example or the similitude of a person who does zikr, who remembers his Lord, and a person who does not remember or does not do zikr is like the example of the living and the dead. Now if you look, and you know, it's like a dead heart and uh, a living heart. Therefore, it is true zikr that we strengthen our hearts, we strengthen our Iman, and we get closer to Allah. Based on this, Ibn Taymiyyah has indicated that الزكر للقلب مثل الماء للسمك فكيف يكون هذا السمك إذا فارق الماء Ibn Taymiyyah asked us, he said, the importance of zikr to the heart is like the importance of water to fish. And he asked, what will the fish be like? If it separates itself from the water, it will die. I mean, so he was commenting on the uh, statement of the Holy Prophet Muhammad that a person who remembers Allah who does zikr and a person who does not is like the living and the dead. So the ulama hadith indicated that you may see that it's not about the death, dying of the body, it's about al qalb Yani, if you want your heart or your iman, your soul to be alive, 
as a Muslim, then zikr is very, very important. The Prophet has thus described, you know, zikr as the best deed that a believer can be involved in at any time, you know, especially during Ramadan. In one important hadith narrated by Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet will always bring benefits to the Sahaba. And these are recorded so that we, the Muslims of today, can benefit from it. On one occasion, the Prophet said, Allah unabbi'ukum bi khairi a'amalikum. He says, should I not inform you of what is the best of all the deeds that you can do? Wa azqaha in the malikikum and the purest of your deeds with your Lord. You know, he says, should I inform you of the best of your deeds and the purest of it with your Lord? And the highest of it, you know, in your level with Allah, that is if you do these deeds, it will raise your level. And it is this deed is actually better for you than spending gold and silver. You know, like spending is better for you like than spending gold and silver. You know, and he said, He says, it is even better, this deed is even better for you than you going to war and striking your enemies and they striking you. What more can be so difficult? Like going to war, facing the enemy, and striking their necks, and they're striking your necks. Call you by Rasulullah. When the Prophet has said all this, that time, should I inform you of the best of your deeds? You know, that will raise your position with your Lord, you know, better than spending gold or silver, better than actually going to war. Certainly, the Sahaba said, Bala ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet said, Bakala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zikrullah ta'ala. He is the case that the best of this deed, the deed that I'm talking about is Zikrullah, that is remembering Allah the Most High. So remembering Allah is very, very essential for us to be able to appreciate it. Actually, all the ibadat, all the ibadat that we do, it is Zikrullah, it is the remembrance of Allah that gives its soul. Every ibadat that we do, and you will see evidence of this in the Quran. Any ibadah that you do, no matter how big it is, if it is not accompanied by zikr, by the remembrance of Allah, it goes to nothing. Now, for example, I'll give us examples if you look in the Quran. If you look about salah, you know, a salah is a very big ibadah because the Prophet said that it is the first thing that Allah will ask us on Yom al Qiyamah. But if you look in Surah Al Qabut, Quran chapter 29, ayah, 20, ayah 45, Allah says, Wa akim is salah. Make sure that you uphold the salah. Inna salah tatanaha anil fashai wal munka. Salah will prevent you from all evil deeds and all vices. Wala zikrillahi akbar. Wallahi alam matasnaun. But the remembrance of Allah is the highest. Because Allah knows what you are doing. If you stand and you are just praying and the remembrance of Allah is not in your heart, Allah knows what you are doing, it goes to nothing. Because even if you look at our salawat, azkar, a lot of azkar, when you go to ruku, you do zikr. When you go to sajda, you do zikr. When you get up, you do zikr. So the zikrullah, Allah says, who akbar, wallahu ya'lamu wa tasna'un. You know, in another verse, Allah says, innani anna Allah. You know, if you look in Surah Al-Yani Taha, Quran chapter 20, ayah 14, Allah confirms, says, innani anna Allah. He says, certainly, I am your Lord. La ilaha illa ana. There is no other God apart from me. For Abu make sure that you worship me. Wa akimi salat al zikiri. And uphold salah for my remembrance. You know? So zikr is very, very, very essential. If you look in Hajj, Hajj we spend a lot of money, we go through a lot of trouble to go to Hajj. But Allah indicates in Surah Al Baqarah, Quran chapter 2, ayah 198. Faida faida. فَإِذَا أَفَّذِتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَزُقُرُوا اللَّهَ إِنْ دَمَشَارَ الْحَرَامِ Allah says when you are coming down from Arafah, make sure that you remember Allah, there is Tashara al-Haram Allah says we should stop there. The reason why we stop there is just for zikr. 
to do zikr, to do tasbih, to remember Allah. In another ayah about Hajj, Allah says, Faiza, af, af, faiza qadaytum manasikakum. When you have actually completed all your rights of Hajj, you have finished everything, you have gone through all the trouble, Allah says, Fazukurullah ka zikrikum aba akum. Aw ashadda zikra. Remember Allah as you remember your fathers, or even more than you remember your fathers. So you are able to see the importance of zikr. You know, now in Ramadan, for us to be able to know the importance of zikr in Ramadan, itikaf, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I mean, the last 10 days, itikaf is set aside specifically for zikr. You know, itikaf, so that you separate yourself from the world, separate yourself from the family, you remain in the mosque. Doing what? Azkar, remembering Allah. And this is why Allah says, Balatu ba shiruna wa antum akifuna fil masajid. Don't intermingle or don't have any relationship with your wives when you are doing it a calf in the masjid. You should only be involved in azkar of Allah. Even in jihad, as the Prophet said in that hadith, you find out that I mean we uphold jihad a lot, you know, going against the enemy. But Allah says, Ya Ladina Aman, Ida Lakitum fi atan fa'afibitu wa zukurullah kathira la'anda kum tuflihu. Allah says, when you meet the enemy, be steadfast. But for you to be successful, make sure that even in war, even in jihad, you remember Allah constantly. So remembrance of Allah is very, very, very essential. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and that is why in the hadith narrated that Abdullah ibn Yusuf, radiallahu anhu, قال, he said, anna rajulan qala ya Rasulullah, a man came to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, O Messenger of Allah, inna shara'il al-Islam kad kathurat alayya fa'habirni bi shay'in atashabbat bihi faqad la yazalu lisanika ratban min dhikrullah You find this in Tirmidhi wa ibn Majah. A person, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said there are so many things that I mean Islam says we should do Apart from praying up, there are so many, there are a whole lot of things. He said, I'm overwhelmed. You know, I cannot be able to do everything. But can you tell me, can you select one thing for me which really will make me close to Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, La yazalu misalaka rathaban min zikrullah. Do not your, let your tongue be dry of zikrullah. Don't let your tongue be dry of the remembrance of Allah. And you know, when I was doing my khutbah last week, I talked about the fact that, you know, we should fast with every part of our body, including our tongue, including our ears and everything. So zikr will uphold your tongue for you. It will prevent you actually from involving in lahu, from involving in vanity, from involving in vain talk. You know, we should do, we should, in Ramadan, we know that all ibadah that we do, zikr should be done all the time. But in Ramadan, all ibadah that we do enhances, you know, that ibadah, particularly in Ramadan. So it's very, very essential for us to remember that zikr is a very, very important uh, aspect of our deen. There are benefits for it. For zikr, there are a lot of benefits. And Allah has mentioned many of the benefits in the Quran. One of the main benefits that ulama have talked about is what Allah talks about in Quran chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 152. Allah says specifically, فَذُكُرُونِ أَذُكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِ وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Allah says, remember me, and I will remember you. We remember Allah through zikr. And if you look at the ulama of tafsir indicates that when Allah says, فَذُكُرُونِ أَذُكُرُكُمْ Allah is talking about a special type of Allah because Allah ordinarily remembers all his creatures. <laughs> you know, Allah does not forget any of his creatures. Ordinarily, he remembers all of them. So when he says, first kuruni as kurkum, when he says, remember me and I will remember you, it means it is a type of special remembrance other than the ordinary remembrance that Allah remembers everybody. So it is very, very essential. This is what Allah has said. He says, remember me, I will remember you. And give thanks to me. Wash kuruni wala takfurun. Give thanks to me and do not be ungrateful to me. Doing shukr, doing tahmid itself is an aspect of zikr. You know? So if you do not, when Allah says, wash kuruni wala takfurun, 
give thanks to me, do zikr of tahaneen, to thank me, and be not ungrateful to me. So it shows also the importance of zikr in this regard. So the one main benefit is that if you want Allah to remember us in a special way, we have to do zikr constantly. Actually, there's another hadith which I'll be coming to to, to, uh, to emphasize that, whereby Allah indicates that if you remember him, you know, in yourself, he himself will remember you. And if you remember him in the community, in the com in company of others, he says he will remember you in a company better than that. So it goes to show that remembrance of Allah is very, very important if we want Allah to remember us especially. Secondly, in the world today we know there's a lot of anxiety in the world. Allah promises us in Surah al raad Quran chapter 13, ayah 28. amanu wa tatma'inna qulubum Allah says those who believe, Allah gives them satisfaction, peace, peace of mind. Their mind, they get peace of mind through zikr. And Allah says, what else? What else could have given you peace of mind, satisfaction of mind, except the zikr of Allah? So the ulama, based on this ayah, have indicated that doing zikr will give the believers satisfaction of heart. It will give us peace of mind even during times of trouble, you know, and it removes anxiety from the heart. Because Allah says, Allah bi zikrillahi tatma'inat kulu. Is it not by the remembrance of Allah that the hearts get satisfaction? So you find the benefits, particularly in Ramadan. The ulama have also indicated that zikr is one means that drives out the whispering with the whispers of a shaitan from the heart. You know, a lot of the time people talk about the fact that, well, uh, the doubt of mind, what is there? What's worse? It is a shaitan that causes this. And you read this in Surah al uh, Surah al -Farak. Therefore, the ulama indicates that if you want to remove the whispering of a shaitan, because the remembrance of Allah and the whispering of a shaitan cannot remain together in the heart. If you are somebody who does a lot of askar, a lot of zikr all the time, it pushes the whispers of a shaitan outside of our mind. It is also very obvious that zikr Allah creates love of Allah in the heart and closeness to Allah. You know, if you continue to do zikr constantly, constantly, it brings you close to Allah, closer to Allah, and it increases the love of Allah in your heart. So these are some of the benefits. There are a lot of benefits in the act of zikr. But more than that, Allah extols. In the Quran, Allah extols. He elevates those who do zikr. And we have evidence in Surah al Moran. Quran chapter 3 from Ayah 190 to Ayah 195 that actually if you want your dua to be accepted you have to precede it with zikr. You know? If you want your dua to be accepted you have to precede it with zikr. Allah describes this in Surah al Imran, Quran chapter 3 from Ayah 190. Allah says إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Allah says in the creations of the heavens and the earth and the changing of the day and the night is a clear sign for those who reflect. Who are those who reflect? You know, these are those who remember Allah. They do zikr, they remember Allah standing and sitting. And they do zikr when they are lying down. And they reflect in the heavens and the earth and the changing of the day and night. And they reflect and say, Rabbana ma halakta hada ba'dilan subhanaka fakina adab al-nar. Oh Allah, you have not created all this in vain. 
Glory be to you. Subhanaka. You know, they do zikr. Then, oh Allah, glory be to you. Save us from hellfire. And after doing that zikr, they now do a lot of prayers. Rabbana ma halakta hadha batla subhanaka fakin na They say, oh Allah, you have not created this in vain. Save us from hellfire. They now follow. Rabbana inna ka mantru khilin nara faqad akhzaytahu. Wa ma li zalimina min ansar. Oh Allah, anyone you put in hellfire, you have really, really shamed them. You know, Wama li zalimina min ansar. The evil ones do not have, will not have any helper. They go on, Rabbana inna na samina munadiya munadi lil iman. An aminu bi rabbikum fa amanna. Rabbana faqfiri lana zunubana wa qafir anna sayyiatina wa tawafana ma'al abra. They say, oh Allah, we have heard the prophet, we have heard someone calling, the prophet calling to Iman that we should believe in our Lord and we have believed. And part of the call is to do zikr. You find a lot of hadith on this. We have believed. Therefore, oh Allah, forgive us our sins and wipe us, wipe off all our mistakes. What And when you take our lives, take Allah, our lives among those who do good, they continue. رَبَّنَا وَعَاتِنَا مَا وَعَاتَنَا عَلَىٰ رُسُلِكَ وَلَا تُعُزِنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّكَ لَا تُخْلِفُ الْمِيَادِ O Allah, provide for us what you have promised to the prophets that if anybody does this, you will do this for them. You know, وَلَا تُعُزِنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Don't shame us on يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّكَ لَا تُخْلِفُ الْمِيَادِ Because you do not recede on your promise. Now see what Allah says. Allah indicates that because they have done with this tasbih, Rabbana subhanaka, you know, ma halakta haza abati, they say they have celebrated Allah's praise, they have done zikr, and they have prayed, then they prayed Rabbana, 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 Allah says, faste jaba lahum, rabbuhum, you know, and their Lord therefore answered them, you know, Allah therefore answered them, you know, because of the, I mean, he said, wa anni la udhiyu ajra man la udhiyu amala amil minkum min zakarin au unza. He says, Allah says, because I will not deny anybody who does good deeds, as I've said, such as Zakar Allah, I will not deny any one of you, whether male or female, the reward of the good deeds that you have done. So if you look in this ayah, ayat, you'll be able to see that Zakar Allah actually is something that Allah loves because he extols those who do it. It is true things that will reflect over what is around us. And when we precede our dua with zikr, Allah says that first Allah answered them. You know, Allah continues to extol those who do zikr again in Surah Al Azar. If you look in Quran chapter 33, ayah 35, when Allah was talking about those who will enter Al Jannah, those whom Allah will raise on Yom Al Qiyamah into Al Jannah, Allah describes, so Allah brought a lot of description. And in closing the ayah in Surah Al-Ahadar, Quran chapter 33, ayah 35, towards the end of it, Allah reminds us that among those who will be elevated, those who Allah will put on Jannah, Allah says, وَالزَّاكِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالزَّاكِرَةً أَعَدَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَعَجِرًا عَزِيمًا Allah says, those who remember Allah, الزَّاكِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Those who, those, uh, the male who remember Allah a lot, وَالزَّاكِرَةً and the female who remember Allah a lot. So you find that it's both for males and females. Allah says those who remember Allah a lot, Allah has prepared for them. Allah has promised them forgiveness for their sins. وَعَجْرًا azim And a very big reward on Yom al -Qiyam. So it's very, very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are in Ramadan. Ramadan provides us opportunity to be able to do a lot of zikr. You know, zikr, is the food of the soul. Zikr is the food of the soul. This is why it is important for us to do it in Ramadan. Because it becomes easy and it gives our soul the power to be able to really rise and be strong. Because we don't eat. Our body is light. You know, we are not feeding the body. In Ramadan, we are not feeding the body. So the body is light. Now if you feel the soul, you feed the soul through Zikr, you find that the soul will shine higher than the flesh, the body. Because it's actually the body, the love of the flesh, shahwat, that pushes us to do everything that Allah does not want. Those who drink wine, it is because of the shahwat of the body. It is the body. <laughs> Those who do zina, it is fulfilling the shahwat of the body. 
If you eat too much, it is not the shower of the body. But in Ramadan, all these Allah says you should stop them. You no eat, no drink, no zina, your body will be light. So the next step is to feed your soul. You feed your soul with zikr, yani your soul will shine and will, it will elevate you in your iman. You know? And this is what the Prophet said, the Prophet actually gave a special name to those who do zikr a lot. He called them al mufarridun you know, in one hadith, the Prophet was passing by and he said, Sabak al mufarridun He said, you know, the al mufarridun that this, those who, 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 who distinguish themselves, those who distinguish themselves with zikr, have succeeded. They have surpassed everybody. Sabak, they have surpassed everybody. You know, al mufarridun those who distinguish themselves, have surpassed everybody. Call woman mufarridun ya Rasulullah. So the Sahaba wanted to know. They said, this is a special name, O oh, Messenger of Allah. Who are the al Mufarridu? Who are those who distinguish themselves? And he said, Az-Zakirun Allah Kathira wa Zakirat. Those who remember Allah and not male, and those who remember Allah and not female. They're all Muslim. You find him in the Sahih Muslim. So if you remember Allah and not, it is a very easy aspect of Ibadah, but we underestimate it. Because the truth of the matter is this. Many of the ibadah that we do, you know, to go through a little bit of trouble. If you want to do nawafil to get benefit from Allah, you cannot just rush into the mosque. You have to do some little bit of trouble. If you have gone to the toilet, you have to do, you know, clean yourself. You have to do wudu before you can do nawafil. But zikr, you can do it anytime. You can do it anywhere. Whether you have wudu, you don't have wudu, you can do zikr. And you get rewards for it. So it's very, very essential. It's an easy way at which we can accumulate a lot of rewards. So we should try as much as, as possible in Ramadan to put ourselves amongst those the Prophet called al mufarridun <coughs> You know, we can do this individually on our own, and we can do it in a group. As long as, I mean, we do it sincerely with the love of Allah. Abu Huraira narrated in hadith, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يقعد قوم يذكرون الله عز وجل إلا حفتهم الملائكة وقشيتهم الرحمة ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله في من إنه رواه مسلم. says at last the prophet said a group of people will not sit down and remembering Allah they sit down remembering Allah except that the angels surround them you know and Allah descend blessings mercy upon them. And Allah descends peace of mind on them. And Allah will remember them with those with him in a higher place. So it's very, very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, for us to know the benefits of zikr, particularly in Ramadan. Now when we talk about zikr, which ones should we do? You know, the Prophet has really blessed us. The Prophet has recommended so many different azkar that we should do. So many. Similar to that man who came to the prophet. So many to the extent that it can overwhelm us. There are so many on different occasions as can. But today, inshallah, in my khutbah, for Ramadan, I want to recommend to you a zikr recommended by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This zikr is a tasbih. And the reason why I've chosen it is, you know, sometimes when you know something, you underestimate it because we know every one of us know it. But if you look in a hadith, I mean, there are so many hadith about this. Samra ibn Jundab narrated that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Abdalul Khalam Arba." He said the best statements that can come from the tongue of a believer are four: Subhanallahi, Walhamdulillahi. ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر وفي رواية قال أحب القلب قلام إلا الله أربع said the most loved words with Allah are four سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله ولا أكبر لا يضرك يعيهن بدأت he said you will not lose you can start with any of them you can say الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله you can say, Wallahi la illallah, Wallahu akbar, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. 
He said these four statements. So it's very easy. You know, all others as cards, you have to memorize them and do them in sequence. But subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa la akbar, the Prophet said, you will lose nothing, it will not harm you in any way with any one of them which you start. So it's good to show the importance of this tasbih. Abi Huraira also narrated, Man kana hina yuzbah, wa hina yunsi, subhanAllah wa bihamdihi miyata marra, لم يأتي أحد يوم القيامة بأفضل مما جاء به إلا قد قال مثل ما قال أو زاد عليه متفق عليه. he said anybody if you want a short version of it he said the prophet said anybody who says in the morning and the evening سبحان الله وبحمده hundred times just say سبحان الله وبحمده you cannot say the wrong long one سبحان الله وبحمده anyone who says hundred of it in the morning and in the evening the Prophet said, on Yom al qiyamah nobody will come with any good deed better than him, except somebody who has done the same thing or done more than him. So you are able to see the importance of this zikr, how small it is. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim, or subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa la akbar. Now for us to be able to appreciate this, as I said, there are so many hadith on this. In another hadith, and most of them narrated by Abu Huraira. In another one narrated by Abu Huraira, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلمتان خفيفتان على النساء. He said there are two statements very light on your tongue. You can say it easily. فكيلة تعرف الميزان. But they are very very heavy on the scale of good deeds with Allah. حبيبة تاني إلى الرحمن. But they are very very light with Allah. سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim This is simple, simple as God, you know, which we know all the time, we know. But what stops us from doing it? You know, you are walking on the road, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim You are driving your car, what stops you? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim You know, or Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. So it's very, very essential. My dear brothers, another one is also istighfar. You know, Allah actually talks about the believers. In the mutaqina fi jannati wa uyun. Those who are conscious of Allah, they will be in a jannah wa uyun. Aizina ma'atahum rabbuhum. They will benefit from what their Lord has promised them. In now, because of what? In now, kabla zalika musini. Because before they came to al qiyamah they were people who do good. Kanu qalila min al-layli yahajahun. They sleep a little bit in the night. They don't sleep much in the night. And during the period of Sahur, they do istighfar. This is the benefit of Ramadan. Many of us, you know, if not for Ramadan, we will not be waiting for a Ashar period. So Ramadan is here. You will wait when you finish your Sahur. Rather than going to bed, sit down and take your Tasbih, your Subah. Astaghfirullah. Allah talks about those. Those who will really get al Jannah and benefit are those who do istighfar during Sahur. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I remind you and I remind myself, we can get a lot of benefit and actually bring quality to our fasting through Azkar in Ramadan. And they are very simple. I've recommended some to you. May Allah make it easy for us to be able to do. And when we do them, may Allah make our hearts shine through it. And may Allah make us near to Allah. Ibadullah, istaghfiru rabbakum inna wukana gafar. أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ramadan offers us opportunity day and night because in the day the time you spend for lunch and you don't need to go at work. This time the time you spend at work you want to go to tea time. That time you spend for lunch and tea time use it for zikr. Use it for as car, you know, to a lot of, there's so much time for us. A lot of the time you find out that, I mean, maybe you go to the doctors. Many of us go to the doctors, we have to wait. Many of us will just sit down doing nothing. While you are waiting for the doctor to call you, what's stopping you from doing as car? Subhanallah, behind this, subhanallah. Subhanallah, why you are waiting? You know? So it's, it's, it's an easy way 
for us to be able to get a lot of action. To corroborate everything that I've been saying, I want to round up with an hadith from Abi Huraira, again, Rabbi Allah Anu Qal. Yehullah Ta'ala, and this hadith is a good thing. Abu Huraira said, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yehullah Ta'ala, Allah the Most High says, Ana in the zanli abdi bi, I am always with my servant the way he thinks of me. You know, I'm always with my servant the way he thinks of me. Wa'ana ma'ahu is a zikarani. And I am with him when he remembers me, when he does zikr. Fa'in zikarani fi nafsihi, zikartuhu fi nafsi. If he reminds me, if he remembers me, if he does zikr in his heart alone, I will also, if he remembers me in his heart, I will also remember him in my heart. Wa iza zikarani fi malayim, zikartuhu fi malayim khayrun min. If he, remind, if he remembers me in a group, I will remember him in a group higher than that amongst the mothers, Malayika. So, zikr is very, very essential. We do not elevate it as much as we should. You know, it's an easy way by which you can accumulate, accrue a lot of ajab. And easily, you know, anytime, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us try as much as possible to exploit this in Ramadan. One, in order to get a lot of ajr and also to give quality to our fasting. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. Now before we do this for all our brothers and sisters who are in hospital, may Allah give them shifa. May Allah give them shifa. May Allah give them shifa. And we all as well, we are all sick, we are just walking around. May Allah continue to give us I an mean, increase in our, in our health, inshallah. اللهم اهدنا فيمن هديت وعافنا فيمن عافيت وتولنا فيمن توليت وبارك لنا فيما اعطيت وكنا شر ما قضيت فانك سبحانك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك فانه لا يذل من عليك ولا يعز من عليك تبارك ربنا وتعاليك ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وكنا عذاب النار كذب من بعد ذلك فاولئك هم الظالمون قل صدق الله فاتبعوا ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببكة مباركا وهدى للعالمين فيه آيات